Hey, wellness crew. So it's been just a minute. <laughs> it's only been a few days, so no worries. <laughs> um, this morning, I woke up super early um, because I had ordered a book that I really wanted to read, and it's a super short book. But after reading it, I was like, I have to talk about this book. <laughs> So it's called Don't Believe Everything You Think. And I don't want to butcher the author's last name, so I'll just say his first name is Joseph. And it he even says in the book he's like once you read this like you're not going to be the same person. And I'm not going to say that I'm not the same person because I've been working on my journey of, you know, being more well and um leveling up and all of that, you know, so I'm not going to say that I'm a different person or anything, but I loved how he talked about um, thoughts versus thinking. And it's in a way that I haven't described before. So I definitely wanted to share it with you. So what I'm always saying is that, you know, our thoughts become our beliefs and then our beliefs become our reality. And he's basically saying the same exact thing, but he's saying it a little bit differently. And what he also does is he changes, or he kind of, not changes, but he describes, you know, the difference between our thoughts and our thinking. And he touches on a point about how really it's not so much that we're living in a reality, we're living in our perception of our reality. An example he uses is how you can ask, you know, just like a blanket question and you can ask it to a hundred people and everybody's probably going to answer a different answer. (laughs) You know, everyone lives in their own type of bubble, but not really so much a bubble, so much as it is just everyone's perception of what's going on in the world and what's going on in their lives is so different. It's just like if we were going to look into someone else's life, you know, like let's say there's like a hundred of us and we're going to watch someone's life for a week and we're just going to see kind of what's going down and what, what's happening we're all going to probably take away from it different things because we're all operating on a thinking process. And his thing was, you know, you really want to try to kind of stop thinking so much. (laughs) Um, Of course, it's natural to have thoughts and all of our thoughts, you know, they may not all be valid per se. Our feelings are. Um, but we control those too. And I've talked about this before, but I just liked how he was kind of describing the difference between, you know, thoughts and thinking, you know, even when you practice meditation, which I do, and I'm sure a lot of you do too, um, you know, thoughts of course arise. And the best thing to do is to just kind of in a way acknowledge them and then let them go. Um, but that's just a thought. Our thinking is like, it's a whole process, you know, um, very similar to like religion and stuff. Like we can become indoctrinated into the way that we think, the way that we allow ourselves to feel. That's why I'm always talking about taking accountability, um, which is not something everybody wants to hear. And that's fine. I just feel like it's important that it be out there somewhere in the ether. (laughs) Um, But at the very end of his book, what he does is he um, basically does a summary and little bullet points, which I love because that's kind of how when I'm doing outlines for my podcast or anything like that, Um, that's what I do is I'll either script it out or I'll just have bullet point outlines. So that way I can just kind of free flow. Um, so in his summary of non-thinking, the first thing that he put as a bullet point was thinking is the root cause of all suffering, 
Now, how can that be true? <laughs> Very easily, actually. So um, he uses a lot of um, Buddhist and Zen stories to illustrate, you know, his points. When it comes to thinking, um, you know, that's us being up in our head, right? That's not us being in our body. That's us being in our head. And oftentimes we're going to find catastrophizing. We're going to find, you know, loops of thoughts. We're going to find a lot of reaction. And ideally, we wouldn't have any of that. And that way we can be in the, like, realm of just, like, joy and love and peace, which sounds super hippie and sounds, like, super impossible. I am just going to touch on a little bit of this book because I don't want to, like, give it all away. And I do want people to read this book. It is really, really good. And it's super short. I finished it this morning. Um, I think I clocked it. It was um, at the end before he does his summaries and his stuff at the very end. I think it's like 99 pages long. Um, so you can read it like in one sitting. It's not, you know, anything super crazy. I mean, you can see it's like really thin. Um, but I think it was a really good investment of a book because yes of course we're gonna have thoughts and you know we're going to have things that come up of course we are but when we're spending all this energy and time you know thinking about things and overthinking and over analyzing and kind of doing things that are going to end up being detrimental right because when we're in our body that's when we're being um, you know, sometimes it can be said like when you're in your head, that's when you're in the doing mode. I, I'm not so sure now I'm starting to kind of shift a little bit and thinking that the doing stuff is in the being is just, you know, being in your body, being in the present. I mean, that's another thing that he really, you know, hones in on is when we're living in the present, that's where we want to be because our thinking is going to go where do I always say not to go <laughs> too much if you can help it the past and the future and when we're thinking about the past you know sometimes that brings up kind of rough stuff when we're thinking about the future that's us usually worrying about what's going to happen next you know what's what is going to happen it's much more easier and you're going to get more done when you're focused on just the present. And I know it's difficult to do, and it seems like it would take a lot of training, but honestly, after just reading this book, I was like in the zone, which is something that he also talks about, you know, kind of like that, that, that flow state. Like when you're working or when you're working on a hobby or something, like, I know when I'm working on my diamond art and stuff like that, I'm not thinking at all. <laughs> like, I mean, I guess I'm thinking like, okay, I just want this to be, you know, a little bit more perfect because I'm a little OCD and stuff. Oh, I am OCD. I'm not a little, it's, it's bad. <laughs> but um, if I'm being authentic, let's be authentic. Um, but, you know, when you're in that state of you're just getting stuff done, you're being productive, you're going to find also too that like your creativity and your um, like the things that kind of come up, being in touch with a higher power. Again, things I've touched on in my previous videos. All of these things came up in this book. It just came up in a way that I think would be digestible for a different type of person and also for the kind of people that watch my videos. So I just, I just loved everything about it. Um, let's see what else. So yeah, this is like, this is what I was just saying. So we don't live in reality. We live in a perception of reality, which is created by our own thinking. So in like mental health type of you know, thing, realms, you know, um, therapists and stuff, they'll talk a lot about stinking thinking. 
So that's when you're thinking about like negative stuff or that you have a thinking pattern that is negative and that is hurting you. We definitely don't want that to be something that continues. We definitely don't want that to even be in our space. Um, so, you know, changing and altering the way that we see things. One of the examples that he uses, which is a, it was either a Zen or a Buddhist story, was basically about how there was a monk, right? And he was trying to meditate, but he was always getting angry because he felt like everything around him was distracting him and everything around him was causing him to be unable to meditate, you know, because he was getting interrupted. So he kept on moving locations and finally decided, okay, I'm going to go out into the middle of this lake of water. And he does that for a few days and he feels great. He's like, oh my gosh, I can finally focus. Everything's wonderful. Well, then on, I think the fourth day, a boat starts coming in and he starts, you know, kind of to notice and he's yelling, stop the boat. You're going to hit me. Well, the boat hits him and he stands up, I guess, probably to, you know, berate the person, which this is a monk, which is kind of hilarious, but probably to berate the person who was steering the boat. Well, no one was steering the boat. It was just a boat adrift that hit his boat and caused him to, you know, have this interruption. Well, a light bulb finally went off for this monk and he was like, oh, there's nobody else to blame. There's nobody else. There's no one here. You know, like this just, it just happened. And in everyday life, we're going to be distracted or we're going to not so much distracted, but we're going to get interrupted. And we have to think about, okay, how are we seeing our situation, whatever it may be? How are we seeing our situation and why are we seeing it that way? Is it in the most positive of lights, positive of ways? Um, not for the sake of anybody else, but honestly, for the sake of yourself, you know, we are responsible for the things that we think for the things that we do. And the sooner that we're able to kind of like own that <laughs> and just be like, okay, yes. Okay. I'm responsible for this. Okay. The sooner you can take accountability, this like life gets so much easier. It just gets so much easier. You're, you're much more able to be your authentic self. Um, and basically, too, it's like, let's say that you do have a negative thought, like a negative thought about yourself, let's say. Um, something comes up, you feel ugly. Something comes up, you feel, I don't know. We'll, we'll just stick with that one, okay? When you're thinking that, that's you choosing, choosing to either agree or disagree. And we can do that with all of our thoughts. Because again, if we think a thought enough, that becomes a belief, which becomes our reality or better spoken, our perception of reality. So I just think it's really interesting. You can apply this to virtually any thought that you have, you know, you can be like, yeah, okay, no, obviously I don't agree with that. But once you have faith in the thoughts that you're having, once you have a belief and it kind of takes hold, if it's a negative one, you're a little bit up shit's Creek, <laughs> just a little bit, you know, you can fix it, of course, but you just have to understand like the things that you put your faith into and your beliefs into these are going to affect you in such major ways so why not have them be more positive or why not work on trying to just think less and you can do that by meditating i mean yeah maybe you can do it by sheer force of will as well i mean i'm not even going to discount that or say not to try um 
But you have to understand too, like having a connection with a higher power, whatever that may be, and it can just be the universe, right? It could be just the planets and the stars and the galaxies and, you know, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not going to try and push any type of like thing onto you about having faith in a specific deity. But what I am going to say is that when you do have belief and faith in something that is larger and greater than yourself, it's very humbling and it's very helpful on your journey. And I don't want to go into that too much more because he describes it so much better than I do. Um, Another good thing to remember is that the thoughts in our minds, they're not facts. So going back to, oh, I'm ugly. That's not a fact. <laughs> like by, by any stretch of the imagination, you know. Um, and beauty is subjective. So if you ever have problems with like self-esteem or like not feeling good about yourself, you know, normally I would say, hey, then do something about it, you know. Go do something about it. Go to the gym or do this or do that. But in this situation, what I'm going to say is before we do that, why don't we just work on the thoughts that you're having? Why don't we just work on the way that you're choosing to see things? Because it is by far going to help you way more being able to, you know, have some control and have some, um, like it's, it's going to give you such a sense of relief to be able to understand that, you know, your thought is not a fact. It just isn't. Now, being in that, in that flow state, right? In that state of really where you're not, it's not conscious thinking. It's not like the intention, like you're not intending to think about blah, 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 whatever, right? X, Y, Z. It's more of that like flow state. Now, that's when creative ideas, that's when good ideas, that's when things that you probably do want to write down and remember for later. I know, especially for me, because my memory um, was impacted by something that happened to me a, a few years ago. So I have to write down a lot of stuff anyways. Um, when I get ideas whether it's for content, whether it's for, you know, something at home or in a relationship or in whatever, in all kinds of relationships, you know, all of my relationships. Um, yeah, I'll like write stuff down when I get these like divine inspirations as I've talked about them before. And um, it's just really helpful too journaling and stuff like that that's a great way to kind of see where your mindset is at but something that I actually um tested out and I don't know why it came to me but it just did um I was watching a couple of years ago so yeah because it got released in 2022 so if anybody has seen the show Severance and the complete like mind fuck that that show is but it's such a good show and I couldn't believe Ben Stiller like oh my gosh I was just like that's it's a great show but what I did is I re-watched some of the episodes like the first I don't know three or four over the last few days and I was able to see that my reaction or not so much my reaction but like my thoughts on this show were so drastically different to what they were two years ago. And I was like, that kind of shows growth, that shows change, change at at the very least. But if you knew where I was two years ago, then yeah, you would know that it is growth. Um, Mentally at least, you know, and, and, and not living authentically. So, I was just like completely taken aback and I was like, I wonder if this would work on other things. So I would just watch like an episode of a show that I used to watch or whatever. And I saw that like my 
um, my thoughts on the show or my just non-thinking at all was such a huge difference as to where I had been two years ago or five years ago. I mean, I went back into stuff that, you know, is like 10 years old because I just wanted to test this the theory a little bit. So if you do by any chance just want to kind of see if you've changed or if you've or just kind of see like how you changed honestly you can do this by revisiting something that you've seen in the past watch it now and just kind of see like engage how like if you're more or less reactive if you're more or less maybe even triggered by something um I'm sure somebody else has thought of this idea, like this isn't something that I just invented, but I just thought it was a really interesting gauge uh, for people that maybe aren't as good at keeping up with like a journal or maybe just want a quick way to kind of gauge, okay, how have I changed? Have I changed for the better? Kind of what's going on? You can actually like feel it and you will see it just based on um something from your past or something that you've seen in the past and now you're going to watch it again and just noticing like oh like with severance i was able to notice all these different things that i hadn't noticed before why because my mind was always like constantly filled with like thoughts and thinking about other things i was never able to be present in what i was watching I was never able, and not that you should be watching a whole bunch of TV anyways, but, you know, I, I see now like, oh, people can really enjoy and, you know, um, like I see now why people, you know, get, get hooked on things. See, for me, I would be watching stuff and I think it was maybe more just to like distract myself from my own, you know, trauma or my own, you know, stuff that I was going through that I wasn't ready yet to kind of let go of and get rid of. And it was just really interesting. And I'm not saying this is going to work for everybody. It may not. Um, but it's just an idea, especially if you're like a visual learner. I'm not really so much of a visual learner, but I do know that, you know, you can definitely see the change in your circumstance or in your perception of reality just based on how much you've changed versus the last time you have seen this you know thing um maybe a movie would actually be a great idea i haven't tried it but um a movie might be a, a really good idea too just to kind of see like hey you know okay this is now maybe you're able to be fully engaged and not have other thoughts um, come up and not think about other things. You know, it's just an idea. It's something that I just, it, it, it just kind of fell in my lap and I was like, okay, well, wow. Cause my experience with the show now is so different than it was two years ago. And it made me feel really good. I was like, okay, like I've made progress. Like that's, awesome <laughs> you know which i've already known this of course but you know it's it's always good i guess to also have like another like sign or whatever about it and yeah so he also says um which is what i said earlier we are in flow when we are not thinking and i want to kind of probably add a caveat to that and say when we are not actively thinking like when we're not intentionally thinking that's when we're in flow and i experience that a lot when i do some of my videos <laughs> i'll be honest i'll just start you know talking from my heart and from my soul and not really intend for it to go down certain routes it, it goes to you know like i'll aim for some of my videos to be 15 minutes and then it's like 30 minutes later, you know, an hour later. Um, but it's stuff that's from my heart. That's not stuff that I'm like thinking of so much. It's just kind of coming to me. I always have an idea of what I want to do, but I don't always have like 
a set script. Like most of my stuff is super free flow, you know? Um, and nothing was more relevant to me than a video that, that I posted on YouTube. And it was a yoga video and it was the first one that I did just a free flow. Like I didn't have a set list of what I was going to do yet. I just wanted a free flow, but I was like, I'm going to turn off comments because I don't want to have to hear <laughs> if there's any complaints or whatever. I checked it today and I was like, oh, okay. So this got way more views than anything I've ever done for my yoga videos. So I just thought that was insane. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, when you're in that flow state, when you're in that creative state and you're not thinking so much, you know, you're, you, I mean, of course our brains are actively working, you know, in order for me to speak and to, you know, do all this. But, um, we're, when you're in that, that state, you're just kind of going and, you're not worried about, you know, the past. You're not worried about the present. You're not worried about all these kinds of things that take up so much space in our heads. Having good memories, of course, like those are going to come up. That's wonderful. That's great. But it's always best to try to stay in the present because that's when you can really like live the memory. Um, especially like with my children and stuff. That's to me, you know, they are my priority, hands down. And when I'm, you know, being present with them, you know, it's like an active memory. It's, I, I don't know how, I don't know if I can describe it differently than that, except that you're living in the memory, you know, like you're living in it. Like, I don't have to remember this because I'm experiencing this now. And it's a beautiful moment and you're able to appreciate and be grateful for it. All right, let me see maybe one more of his bullet points and then I will wrap up. Okay, we think because it is a biological response to survive. Our minds think only because it is trying to keep us alive, but it does not help us thrive. It is only concerned with our safety and survival, but not our fulfillment. Thinking holds us back from our highest selves by causing negative feelings within us that prevent us from following our true callings. And I think that's so true. You know, I mean, you can have a whole bunch of different careers within your lifetime, especially my generation and the generations that are going to be coming up. You know, there is no more, you're going to be doing this one thing your whole life. Or, I mean, there is, but it's pretty rare. <laughs> um, but, you know, making, you know, moves, whether it's career-wise, whether it's traveling, doing just something different, whether it's trying a new parenting skill, whether it's, um, I mean, whatever it may be when we're just in that free flow state, right? That, or as he says, the flow state, but I say free flow because to me, that's when I'm in the zone, just like he says. Um, and a lot of us that are trying to kind of talk about the same thing, we're just using different words. And that's why like, I love to find people that are using a little bit different terminology than I'm using because my goal is to help as many people as possible. Um, whether that's talking about my mistakes, my blunders, whether that's talking about a book, whether that's talking about things that have helped me um, to just become a better, more fulfilled version of myself, you know? And I'm always striving, you know, to keep on bettering myself and improving. And I'm not going to put that on everybody else. I'm just saying that for me, that's what, you know, helps me, keeps me going, keeps me motivated. So if you want to have a, you know, much more thorough, because I really didn't want to give too much of his stuff away. 
Um, if you want to have a much more thorough, you know, thing and experience when it comes to your thoughts and thinking and thinking patterns, go by, don't believe everything you think. No, I'm not sponsored. I'm not anything. It's just whenever I find something that helps me, I'm like, oh my gosh, this can help my wellness crew. So let's get that going. <laughs> and that's what all of this is about. It has nothing to do with sponsors or any, you know, anything like that. Um, if you did enjoy this video or anything, please, please, please like, subscribe, and or follow. Um, I'm on two different platforms, so that's why I say um subscribe and or follow just in case anybody was wondering. <laughs> the other one starts with an R and ends with a umble, so <laughs> um but yeah, so definitely check that book out and just see, you know, it doesn't take long to read. Just see what type of like mentally, like just where you're going to be at after reading this book. I would be very curious. Yes, the comments are going to be on for, for this exactly because I do want people to read this. And I want their take on it and their, you know, if they felt, you know, moved the way that I did and different the way that I did. So until the next video wellness crew, I'll see y'all then. <laughs>